Hi, Joe Glavin with City Floor Supply. Welcome to Facebook Live in our repair shop. Um, you know, a lot of people often ask me, hey, what's new in the industry? What's, what's revolutionary? What's gonna change the market? And sometimes I don't have an answer for them, but today I do, and it is awesome. Here with the owner of Revolutions and Jerry and I have Jerry Brainerd um, Jerry and I have known each other for about 25 years um, and that would be three buildings ago um, for locations for city floor supply um, they do a lot of sander part um, manufacturing and remanufacturing for uh, drum sanders like you see in front of you here today we and got some right behind you here, yep and right behind us so uh, revolutions Inc Jerry Brainerd has a unit that they just developed well it didn't just develop it's been in development but we're ready to go is the rev rider and the rev rider will uh, allow the operator to run tandem 12s in a gym floor setting, uh, an edger in a 100 foot long gym floor setting. I know all the gym floor guys are already cheering. And also single eights. So we will run all of these today. Uh, hook them up and show it. The unit is uh, battery operated. I'm gonna let Jerry get into the details of the type of battery and it's um, the length that it can run, all that good stuff. So Jerry. Take it away. There. All right. First of all, I wanted to say, uh, Joe mentioned that I started my company 23 years ago, and I got to say that uh, it was Philadelphia Floor Store back then. That's right. But uh, they were our first customer outside of a family member. Uh, these guys took care of us and got us started, and I just want to say I appreciate you guys awesome. giving, giving us a shot. That's good so stuff. It's been 23 years, and we're still going strong. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's dig into the machine. We decided to develop a machine that was, um, to, uh, you know, push sanders for the sport floor industry. Uh, we wanted to make it easier, smaller and more maneuverable and, and give it more, more qualities to it than just basically running the two machines. Cause we can actually take this machine and pull in with a cart, all your supplies into the gym or out of the gym. You can, um, set it up for edging, not just for the big floor sanders, but for edging and buffing and trio machines, whatnot. We've hooked every type of machine up to our Rev Rider and they've been working great. And he literally, I kid you not, literally brought all the parts, adapters, even the second Rev Rider in on that cart with that Rev Rider out of the van, loaded it up in the parking lot and brought it in the door. Like it was awesome. Makes it real easy. We just have a little, pin in the back here that we are able to pull the trailer with um, so but uh, if you want to get started but basically we wanted to make it small to get in and out of small areas not just uh, the big sport floors but even getting them into the in, into the gyms themselves um, so it is small it will push these two 12s for up to eight hours we've done seven and a half eight hours straight run time um, without a charge. Um, now this battery unit takes about two and a half to three hours to recharge, or you can buy a second battery and just flop once a day at lunchtime. And you got plenty of, uh, you got 15 to 16 hours of runtime. Um, so the DC part of it makes it, uh, actually it, it gets, makes you more mobile so that you can use it for other items, but you're still obviously connected to your cords for your big sanders. We haven't been able to eliminate that. I didn't want anybody to think that we're running the whole thing via DC battery operated. Uh, it's just this unit. Um, They'll get that figured out eventually. <laughs> a couple more years. <laughs> but uh, we, we have two, okay, our mainstay for hooking up to any machine is that we do not modify the machine. There's no drilling and tapping. Uh, we, we hook up we have a, a dual mount here for the American 12s. They go into pre-drilled holes already for the sander for the handles. So 
So the handle tube assembly goes into the base of the chassis here. And this unit, um, what's the name for this? That's the dual tow bar. Dual tow bar adapter fits right onto um, the base for the uh, handle assembly. Yep. So there's no, there's no need to drill the machine. There's no need for any other kind of hookup. And go ahead and tell them the unique part about this. Yeah, the unique part about this setup is that um, we run it on a, a solid bar between the two machines, and they actually are an independent, um, like an independent suspension. So this one, if it rises a little bit, isn't going to take this one up with it. Or if this one dives down, it's not going to take the other one with it. Um, they're completely independent. And in a little bit, we'll show you, they have a little ramp over here that we'll be able to show that demonstration very, very clearly. Um, the second thing is we set this up. This seat does move up and down for different size operators, but you'll notice these are stock American 12 sanders. We don't have any extensions on them. You hook right up, you can take your machine and take the rev rider and run right into it. Every machine that we do, that's how we set them up. Um, if we wanna talk quickly about our other setup, in case you do have, here's the, uh, here's the, the setup for the other uh, rider. They got extended handles because they sit up higher. But so we, have, we do have a unit. This is the exact same base unit as that one over there. It just has a different seat mount and foot mount. So you got foot pegs. So we do, we do make it for the extended version, but I just wanted to be clear that with our, our base model, it fits up to any machine with no modifications. So there's no additional expense trying to get it hooked up to your machine. Right, and you can see the aftermarket that we've got on here. Um, you know, we have an extended handle tube assembly that's angled. We have extended control rod assemblies here that are angled. Then we have rear connector ears that are drilled through the chassis in order to put a dual tow bar on. So all of that would be essentially eliminated with the adapter kit and the rev rider. And I'm not saying anything against this system. Right. No, because it's a great system. It's been around for years. Tried and true. And they do really well with them. Ours is just a little different, a little smaller, a little more compact, and a little more versatile. Actually, a lot more versatile. But um, anyways. So yeah, we, and we can get into that versatility yeah. for sure. So versatility, just the unit itself, we have two controllers. We have a, a joystick, which has the brain. That's the controller. And you can either use this or you can use the foot pedal down here. The foot pedal is strictly forward and reverse. Um, but when you have machines on here that you can articulate, you can steer all you need. So that's all you need is the front and back. Um, now, when you get to the, the joystick, this is gonna be used for edging because you, you, gotta, you gotta be on that edge. You gotta be able to, you got to be able to walk it where you need it to go, right along the edge, and keep everything humming along. So you got to use the, the joystick for that. It's also used for the other machines, such as uh, anything that doesn't articulate, like the trio, um, buffers, edgers, you know, anything that doesn't articulate like this does, or a single machine even, you got to use this. Plus for hauling in and hauling out your supplies in your cart. And we're going to show that. We're going to show yeah. the use of that with the edger. Um, again, we're going to run an 8-inch floor crafter belt sander. And we are going to run these two um, non-adapted stock uh, 12s. I'm actually going to have uh, Chris Sullivan come in and run them. Uh, we will show, maybe I'll just do that now. Yeah, do you want to show I'm the just going to show the independent suspension or the, um, on the units. So Let me make sure you're I am on. powered on, right? Yep. Right there? You're on. I'm on. And then you got to hit number two on the back, but it already has been hit. Okay. So you're, now you're foot pedal mode. Great. So I've got a foot peg here, kind of like a motorcycle or dirt bike. And I'm just going to walk my way or work my way over to that ramp. And uh, Tom, I don't know if you can get in close, maybe where Jerry is, and you'll see the left machine ride up on that ramp and the right machine stay on the floor. And you figure, well, why is that important? I'm talking and I'm driving, so be careful. <laughs> um, why is that important? 
it's because sometimes gym floors aren't exactly, there it goes. See that one? It just went up in the air and I'm now I'm at the wall, but that's about a half of an inch of raise. And now you're not going to have that in a gym floor, but you will have a roll. And when the floor rolls or isn't level, you know, you're, you're going to get a dig and it's going to dig. Um, it's going to dig on the floor and you're going to have to work that out. So that's just awesome. We're just going to do a, a back and forth uh, because we have to move along here. We're going to put the uh, floor crafter on and then we're going to put the edger on. And I want you to think what we're going to do with that edger. Just think about edging a 100 foot long gym, you know, 80 feet along the back wall and doing that back up 100 feet again and then 80 feet again. So that's going to save somebody's back. And that's huge. So everybody asks, hey, what's new in the industry? What's going to make us better? Can anybody do anything about edging? Jerry and Revolutions, they've got it. So without further ado, if you don't know Chris Sullivan, Chris Sullivan is our VP of sales and he has been a gym floor contractor in another life. Um, he's spent a lot of time in that seat. Well, not that seat, but in a seat like that. Um, that actually looks like a soft tail seat, <laughs> like a Harley. Oh yeah, um, that was intentional. There you go. So. Uh, Chris is going to sand, and again, we're just going to do an up and a back. So, I want to fire him up. Quickest gym floor sand I've ever How seen. How about it? Yeah. And, and it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it, it's probably really hard to see on, on video, but um, you know we've got we've got a full sand and and the the product. I mean it it is designed to do you know a hundred foot stretch in a gym. I mean we only have fifteen or twenty feet here in our test area, but. Uh, you could just tell the, the construction, the design of it, everything. Pulling two twelves that haven't been modified, such a great idea. One more thing I'd like to bring yeah. up is um, like the unit that's out there and available is here, you know, in the States, it's, it's great. You get outside of the States and now you've, you know, you've got to figure out how do we hook this thing up electrically, 50 hertz versus 60 hertz. Well, with ours, um, the only thing that electrical is charging the battery at night. And we have one charger for 60 hertz, it's like this, and we have another one for 50 hertz. So all they do, anybody in Europe or anywhere else where it's 50 hertz, you're basically just getting a different charger and you're charging your battery on your electric. So that's handling not only the cycle of hertz, but it's also handling the voltage. Yes. Right. Yes. It's going to be 220 over yes. there. Yes. 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 Okay. It's just like, um, uh, you know, they, they, they have chargers for yep. other items over there, just like, yeah. you know, we do here, but uh, it would just be a charger difference. How about uh, length of time of charge? Does it change um, when they bump it to 240 or is it? You know, that's a great question. I'll have to get back yeah, to you on no that. Problem. Yeah. Because if it is 240, it should be quicker. I know on 110, this one takes about three hours. Okay. But on 220, I bet you it is. Yeah, probably a yeah. little. A little, little bit less. Quicker, yeah. But I don't know. I don't yeah. know the design we'll find that the battery. Out. And it is, what's this like battery? A lithium battery. Right? It's a lithium, lithium battery. battery. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's about this big and it goes all day long. Okay. So we're going to unplug this um, tandem. Uh, we're also going to disconnect the 
uh, front control rods so that we can put the floor crafter on. Yeah. And uh, GM, you want to, is that off? You can oh, run great. a single eight inch, right? Yes, which is what we're going to do now. No, you're going to do. Oh, that's what that's yeah. for. No, no, that's actually to check. Um, oh, both of them. Okay, okay, okay. But it works. It works for both. <laughs> <laughs> So you know what? I'm gonna pull the pin. Right? Yep, pull the pin, then we get then the other pin. You gotta push that pin through. Yep. Did you get it? it there you go. Oh, there it is. Put it back in so we don't lose it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. So we won't need this big cord holder for or maybe we do. Well, running an eight we can just run it and hold okay. the cord no um but yeah you run it with a cord holder um now you get into residential and you're going to want a smaller cord holder so you're right. not hitting walls but you're still going one direction mm -hmm. so um anyways so this is how easy it is to to disengage pop 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 all done <laughs> let's take this guy out of here Gonna put these back. All right. Now we do use a separate set of link arms for the floor crafter because the machine needs to be set up just a little bit different. One of the link arms is a little bit longer than the others. So. And again, that's, this is all very fast. So I see we have eight people watching on Facebook. If you guys have any questions, definitely be sure to let us know. Um, this is the first time we're demoing this machine here at City Floor Supply. And Jerry here is actually the owner of the company. So any questions you have, he can definitely help you out. So this is a great, great setup. Um, you can do gyms with a setup like this, but now obviously you're not going to be doing production gym work. Um, you can do ballrooms, dance floors. You got a big open space. You don't want to be walking all day long. Your production time goes way up because you're moving faster and things are cutting more consistent. Um, and one of the things that we've noticed through all of our testing is that our brace of life it gets extended. And a big reason for that is because um, the consistency of the cut, um, like on edging, you know, like when you're edging, it's because you're pushing down at different amounts at different times. 
Well, with the Rev Rider hooked up to an edger, it's just cutting and it's consistent. Same with the Floor Crafter. Um, you're gonna see how consistent and quickly we can sand, um, which keeps the heat down on the abrasive, which makes it last longer. So, I'll give it a shot here. Now I got the belt, I'm gonna check it for tracking. Okay, ready? Yep. <laughs> I'm sure they'll see that stop I just made. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, perfect, easy in and out. It's actually very handy in a large residential area uh, as well, um, even though, because the sport floor guys are going to be using the duels. I would say... Yeah, but you could throw that up on a stage. Stage, dance floor. Back hallways. Absolutely. You know, that kind of thing, going into a locker room. Yep. So wherever you need a single, I always see guys with like eight inch machines, whether they're Hummels or floor crafters, yep. kind of in the back of the gym where they have to do small sure, areas. Sure, yep. Like where the um, the rollout stadium bleachers are. Yep. There, you know, may be an empty section that's 16 feet long. It's just too much to bring that in there. Absolutely. There you, you go. Do that. Yep. Now, another beautiful thing about our setup, being that we're stock, we don't change, we don't drill holes. We've made it very easy to... Um, Let's say walk it. Let's say you're in a house, a large house, 500 square foot, great room, blah, blah, blah. You want to get it done fast. You're in there, you're doing it. All of a sudden you got to go in the kitchen and it's just too small to do it. Well, here's what we're going to do. About three seconds here. One, two, wham. Now look at this, I'm walking it. So now, not only are we Riding, I can put it back in in probably 10 seconds. You can ride, you can walk. Depending on the area of the, of the location you're at, you can ride, walk instantaneously. Yeah, I was just at a job site. I was telling Jerry this morning with a contractor, we were doing some craft oil finishing, and the, um, the room was 2,000 square foot open ballroom that had herringbone, you know, just a beautiful uh, herringbone walnut floor. And the sanding of that, I'm watching the guy sand it thinking, man, this would be perfect because it's a wide open room. But then where the entry is to both sides of that ballroom were just smaller areas. We could flip those Pop off, the, pins, the control rods, go. and go. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, so we try to keep it, you know, keep the whole process streamlined. Right. I see so, this handle. What's the, uh, what we, we got, got going there? We got a, we we make our own uh, uh, feathering handle assemblies. They're extremely tight uh -huh. and fun to look at. I like you it. You want to try it? Yeah. Check it out. Look at that. And you can feel your yeah. It's 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 look at tight. That. It's even you know keeps your wrist off of yep. that. Yep. Yep. And that's got good length on it. Yep. Now, for guys doing kitchens, this can get in the way of, yeah, and of the, countertops. Right. But we can always make them smaller, mm -hmm. you know. Nice, that's tight. That's real nice and yeah. tight. We make them for the Hummels. Yep. We make them for floor crafters. That's not going to flop down on you moving in no, and out there. No, I like that. That's, yeah. That's great. This is the adapter we use for the um, Edger assembly. This can be left in here, so the time that it's taken me to install this doesn't necessarily have to be there, because um, it can be pre-installed and left. Because you can you can do these link arms. Oh, I see. So you you see. just leave that on there. Yeah, there's no reason to even take it Got off. It. But we kind of wanted to start from scratch today.
and in fact, you don't have to take the link arms off either. But for right. show and tell purposes, we're gonna. So this fits in here. It looks like there's a detent yep. in there. Yep, we got detents so in there. The, um, the shaft can be locked in yep. with the, uh, the rubber snubber. Yep. And do you need the connecting rods for this or not? Uh, no. Okay. Now we've also set up, we prefer to have your edger come in if you buy a rev rider mm -hmm. and we can show you guys how to do that as well, but how to, we set up these edges, they're almost flat. Okay. We're, get, we're gonna cut the, the right out off. of it. Yeah, cause we can. Okay. Because yeah. you know, cause we're supporting it almost from behind right. and you're, you're able to control it instead of, you'll see. All right, so the repair guy in me has got a question. Okay. What about dust pickup with flattening it out like that? It, it does increase the dust pickup. Okay. Because that's the problem with edgers is usually they're up like this yep. and all this stuff kind of comes out the back end. So you are increasing. I'm not saying yeah. it's great. Um, it's still an edger. It's still an edger. <laughs> uh, another thing too, I mean, guys with vacuum systems, I mean, the vacuum hose can actually hook up to that core carrier, not through it, but you can okay. like zip tie it right. and run it right through here up to any of your machines. So, I mean, it's... You yeah, can, I could see us manipulating the tank back on the back or something We're, like we're that. coming up with a... Right. Uh, we'll talk about yep. that. All right. All good. Gears are turning, Jerry. Gears <laughs> are turning. A little bit of a trailer. <laughs> You know, because you've eliminated a cord. Yeah. You know, there's there's so many more options now that. Exactly. But you don't want to be stuck to that vacuum hose. Right. You know, I mean, you do to pick up stuff, but if you can eliminate that. Sure. Now you're styling. All right. So you can you can check it two ways. You can lift it back to check it, or you can lift it all the way up and hold it. Look at that. I think we're good. We're just going to do a couple passes anyways. Yep. So. Do uh, so you want to talk about the casters? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure do. So what we do, in order to um, attach the rev rider to the edger, we made, we developed this attachment, and it bolts into, uh, for the B2 here, we have them, um, into a the standard caster bracket holes yes yep yes you can do it either way uh and, and the super 7r lines up the exact same place so we can hook up right to stock holes no adding uh extra holes or you can go with this mod aftermarket um wheel kit that actually extends your base a little bit um you're not using the wheels on here as much as you would like when you're normally edging right because you're supported here but um, the wheels are still running, so I'm going to need a 916th, I think. Okay. Uh, socket or uh, open end wrench? Either one. So this is our handle assembly for the, for edging. And again, this bolts right into existing holes. We're not modifying the B2. Awesome, thank you. All right. I missed that, so that goes into the handles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And then we've got a, looks like a wall roller guide. Yeah, we have a guide roller over here. It's over here. So we have a guide roller here. All right, who doesn't uh, like edging? No. We hate edging. There you go. Why I'm going to switch it. Because of our backs. That's right. I'm going to switch it to the um, joystick controller now. So we're at four. I'm going to go down to three. We're going to hit number two back here. 
No, number one, sorry. And is that, when you say two and one on the back? Is it's just an AB. Uh, you know, it's an AB switch. Okay. You know, a, a for joystick, B for foot yep. pedal, which I don't even need to touch that. So just to kind of give you an idea. I can, I'm, I'm better at just going in the forward motion. Um, I have been able to get a little better in the reverse direction, but forward direction, I picked up within three passes. And after that, now I've just tweaked, you know, right. and gotten better. Yep. Um, some people can go in reverse better than I can. Uh, I can sit and spin on, on a dime. I'll, I won't go all the way, <laughs> but you can. Now, <clears throat> we're getting, okay, <laughs> this is the fun part because we've been actually able to get a bigger sweet spot on the sanding disc and sanding paper because of the way we're able to set up the edger. Um, we're able to cut pretty aggressively and I know that, you know, um, the original edger and how people manually do it is very aggressive. But we can, um, as you'll see, and if, if anybody that wants to try it, you'll see, I can tear stuff up without any problem with this. And I can actually, one of the benefits is because I can actually give it a little bit more force. And you'll hear that. I'll do that when I, I'll make a few passes. Right. Um, I'll kind of go easy at first and then I'll start putting some pressure on it. And you'll hear the motor go down. I, I could probably snuff out the motor. Sure. But, um, and you don't want yeah, to- you got that. a lot of leverage there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I didn't realize that was also kind of um, independent there. Yes. It's not, it's not a permanent right. bolt-on fix. It's all heim joints. Yeah. So you got, you're got, so you got- You do have articulation, so a little bit of articulation. You do have articulation yep. and you do have, to, you, you can't just, you, you right. gotta, you gotta you, you can go too far forward, you can go too far sure. back. You gotta keep it in the middle in the okay. sweet spot, but you can you can give it that extra. You know, I was just in my head thinking, well how are you if you're just gonna ride that, how are you gonna get you know pressure or how are you gonna get that spot that's you know, somebody left a drum mark from yeah. fifteen years yeah. ago yeah. Yeah. and you gotta get that finish that's fifty years old out. Yeah. Because you can see it. Yeah. They're gonna Absolutely. you know, grind it out. You're gonna have to go over it back and right. forth a few times, but yeah, you're gonna grind it awesome. right. Awesome. Yep. You know, I haven't tried this, but I, I'm just wondering if I, you know, if I put a little bit of weight here, that's something okay. I'm gonna work on. But, um, cause one of the things like with the buffer is you can stand on the buffer. If you really got to dig something yeah, out, yeah, yeah. It'll, you can just actually stand on the buffer and still move around on it. It's kind of cool. All right, let's uh, get her started up. last one yeah I was right, looking dug. to see what the current draw was but my oh. meters are on that one <laughs> ah. yeah I uh, I dug in a little bit more where and I, I'm using an 80 grit right now right we threw yeah a, that's aluminum oxide <laughs> is that well if we throw a 36 I know I can take it off right but um yeah so that is the edger attachment that is just riding an edger folks that's yeah. just awesome my back feels great man and who I mean you're Back and forth, back and forth. It yeah. doesn't matter. You're not expending. And look yeah. at how quick. 
And especially on a gym floor, you're just going forward. That's it. You keep going around in a big square. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. So there you have it. So adapters for Edger, whether it's a B2, seven, I'm assuming other industry. Other, other Edgers too. Edgers. Um, like we haven't. Randmeister. Yeah. Or, we haven't hooked those up, but I mean, we're not going to. Yeah, we'll I'm not foreseeing any problems. Right. We, we've just done the Super 7R and the B2. Okay. Um, buffers. Then, uh, yeah, buffers. Big Sanders, duals, singles. 12s. 12s. Um, trios, 3DS. Logler 12s. Logler 12s, yep. Uh, Clark Ameri or American Sanders 12s. Yep. I keep saying Clark. It's hard to get at. I know. Uh, American Sanders and Galaxies. Yeah. Right. I got a great video of uh, dual American or Galaxy 8s. So if any anyone is familiar with the Galaxy manufacturer, if you're going to have duels on those and that guy's pulling them, that Rev Rider, that means it can do some work because those Galaxies can cut. Yeah. And they have a lot of front drum pressure, you know, with that pivot as opposed to the wheels, you know, kind of going up into the chassis. Yeah. Yeah, I figure um, a gal two Galaxy 8s yeah. running at 24 grit or 36 grit on full drum pressure is about the same as two of those running at, you know, 24 oh, grit. Oh, yeah. You know. No doubt. That's so. great stuff. So yeah. we have any questions? This is it, guys. This is what's new in the industry. Everybody always asks, what's new? Yeah. And, you know, there's some people that are old school, you know, yep. that just don't, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, we're not trying to convince or change everybody over. We're just trying to take people who are looking for the next, the next new thing. That's it. To uh, make life easier and make production better. No doubt. And I think one of the great takeaways for us has been, um, you know, shipping to Europe. Yes and being able to charge and taking the um, 50 hertz, 60 hertz out of the mix. And if anybody's not familiar with that, um, that 50 hertz and 60 hertz has everything to do with RPMs of the motor um, on its you know, AC cycle up and down. So you know, that, that's a huge, that's a game changer right there. I mean, that's neat. Yeah. Really cool. Patrick Russell wants to know what's it go for. Well, you'll have to let them know. I, I, I'm about seventy-five hundred dollars to a contractor. Right. Okay. Yeah, we haven't even we haven't even brought one in yet, um, but we will. I can guarantee that. Yep. And uh, the I mean, just the amount of production increase and abrasive savings and your body is I mean pays for itself very very quickly. Those two motors down there look like tailpipes. <laughs> they're, they're actually jet engines. They look like, I mean, <laughs> that is, it's a really, really nice piece of work. Thank you. And um, actually, if, if you look up at this shop table here, um, just look past my coffee mug, there are 12 inch drums and eight inch drums. So there's an eight inch drum for a uh, floor crafter. Yep. Um, for an American eight or Super 83, if you still have one, <laughs> and an American 12s up top here. And these are uh, kind of what you cut your teeth on. Yeah, that's, this so, is our core business. Right. Um, we started with drum recovery 23 years ago. Um, that's all we did. Um, started, got one, one type of drum done, yep. and then we're saying, let's go on to the next one. Joe kept sending us new ones to that's do right. it. And, and by the time, about two years in, we were able to do every drum on the market. So, and what I will tell you, um, what we have found from Revolutions, like their balance, um, the adhesive for their 12s, particularly on the riders, it's fantastic. So um, this is a vulcanized rubber. Yep. Um, and you know, for a OEM um, to be able to do that, but for someone to recover a, a vulcanized rubber drum, um, I'm just, it might be inside baseball, but I know as, as from having fixed these machines that that's a difficult thing to do. Um, and what I'm holding here, yep, it's our new Galaxy right. cart dolly, and basically, it's like a, any other dolly for like the Hummels or the floor crafters. It just hooks in. You got a pin, snap the pin. I don't have a Galaxy machine right here, but uh, yeah. And this is for the older series. Um, Galaxy changed the frame about seven or eight years ago, and we're still working on. 
making that one. Uh, but this is for anything older than eight years. It'll fit right on. It's snug and heavy duty. So I'll tell you, it's heavy duty. I mean, this thing probably, I don't know, 10 pounds at least, maybe 15. And then we look at the um, you know, wide non-marking gray wheels. Yep. Bearing so centers. Bearings, full ball bearing centers. Like that's good stuff. You know, that's going to last somebody that's got a couple crews and they're kind of not nice at the end of the day, putting the machine into the van. That's going to hold up. Very nice. Yeah. What's the speed of the rider compared to a traditional cart run? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? Traditional cart um, versus that speed wise. Speed wise, I'm going to say they're identical because I've got a video, but I can't like just show you right now, but it's this riding along with the traditional one? Ron's um, Jim Floor Sander from okay. New Jersey. Yeah. Hi, Ron. Uh, and, and Ron, I can probably get that sent over to you, um, showing you the two riders running together. Okay. Perfectly in yep. tandem. Excellent. Any other questions? Do you have anything else you want to No, add I just, uh, I'm so pleased to be here and grateful that you were uh, allowing us awesome. to do this on one of your Facebook Lives. And, uh, no, it's Really, really, really good appreciate stuff. it. That's awesome. I'm really happy to have you and you know, to show something that's uh, no pun intended, revolutionary. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. Love it.